We are going to address a very long-standing dogmatic teaching in emergency medicine, which is when a patient is in front of you with an ST elevation myocardial infarction, and it looks like it's involving either the inferior or the right side of the heart, what drug should you categorically avoid, Drew? Ah, uh, well... You are setting me up perfectly for the thing that I have never believed in, which is avoid nitrates if there is a right-sided myocardial infarction going on because you are guaranteed to cause hypotension to quote-unquote tank the patient and then have to resuscitate them. Now, I have always thought this was a little bit of hogwash and dogma, but I am so glad, Cam, that we're going to cover a paper that finally is going to address this for me and tell me if I have been right all along or if I should have jumped off my high horse a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. I, I think we have both you know, heard this teaching. It has certainly given me pause a number of times over my career. And you know, it has been in the major guidelines. Both the American Heart Association and the European Society of Cardiology have recommended the avoidance of nitrates in the setting of particularly right-sided myocardial infarctions for a long time. They still do at this point in time. And so this paper is seeking to actually bring the best evidence to bear. So I think that's a good summary of the background. In this article, we're gonna cover the administration of nitrates, specifically during right ventricular MIs. And I just wanna pause for a moment because as I think we all know, identifying an RV MI is easier said than done in many cases. And so oftentimes, the pattern of injury that we see on the electrocardiogram points to the inferior side of the heart. About half the time, that will involve the right ventricle. About half the time, it won't. You can try to get much more specific with things like right-sided leads and posterior leads to kind of further delineate that. But at least for my thinking, we're talking here about what looks like a, a rock-solid right-sided STEMI or an inferior STEMI as, as, as being included in all of the papers that we're subsequently talking about. Yeah, I think it's totally fair because remember that the way our coronary artery anatomy works and the reason the inferior MI is the one that is the culprit for potential being right-sided is it's almost 50-50 split anatomically who has the inferior or the apex of the heart perfused by the LMA or the RCA. Exactly right. And so... Because we're not interrogating the vessels, what we're trying to back ourselves into diagnostically is who's got the RCA out? And I think, as we all know, that's not always so easy to say on an electrocardiogram alone. So again, right-sided MI or inferior MI were included in the meta-analysis that, that we're discussing. And let's tell you what it is. It's by Wilkinson Stokes et al. It's a meta-analysis that came from the uh, Emergency Medicine Journal in 2023, a relatively recent publication. It is entitled adverse events from nitrate administration during right ventricular myocardial infarction, a systematic review and meta-analysis. And as you probably recall from our most recent conversation last month, this is a meta-analysis that is following the relatively new and now industry standard PRISMA guidelines. So if you don't remember what the PRISMA guidelines are, feel free to turn back to the July episode where we get into that in some detail. But essentially what this paper is trying to do is use the best methodology to summarize all of the literature that has looked at this topic over the last 30 years or so, and then compare it against the single citation that actually underlies those professional recommendations. And so before we go further, I think we do need to just say like, where did this all come from, this teaching? And it came from one paper by Ferguson et al. It was published in 1989. It involved 40 patients, and that is it. So if you follow the AHA and the ESC guide, uh, recommendations all the way down the audit trail, you're going to see that it ends in that Ferguson paper. And the question is, how much does that Ferguson paper um, you know, continue to, to guide our, our treatment in 2024, um, or can we find some better publications? And so two independent reviewers you know, sat down and they did the PRISMA methodology and they tried to find every single publication that has historically identified this. And they began with a titular search and they found you know, something like 650 different articles and then they went through the entire PRISMA methodology and they were left with five, one of which was the Ferguson. So there's the Ferguson paper and then there were four other um, more modern papers 
And you know, they, they, they lumped them all together for the purposes of meta-analysis. What they actually looked for, because the drug, the root, the dose was quite heterogeneous between these six publications. So they dichotomized the results between patients with an ST elevation MI in the inferior or right-sided circulation that received nitrates versus those who did not. And they attempted to compare then the, um, the adverse events of patients who had ST elevation MIs in other circulations for those who received nitrates. Any concerns about the way that these researchers approach the methodology, Drew? I think the researchers approach this in the right way, right? And and like we've seen on several of the previous meta-analysis we cover over the past couple of months, methodologically, the researchers are doing the best they can, and they're doing a really good job with not the best quality evidence. We had the same issue when we were talking about antihypertensive medicines in the neurovascular emergencies. It was a low quality of evidence, although it was a really, really done work as far as the authors go. Exactly right. And cutting to the chase on this one, essentially what the researchers found were all of the non-Ferguson publications demonstrated no adverse events. The single Ferguson publication did, of course, report a number of adverse events. It was methodologically the weakest of all of the included studies. As an example, uh, the, the manuscript does not even indicate the dose uh, that the majority of the patients received of nitrates. And so the researchers actually went one step further and they performed a sensitivity analysis going way back to the original paper's data. That paper purported to demonstrate a relative risk of 4.6 when patients received nitrates in the setting of a right-sided MI as compared to all other MIs. And to cut to the chase, the authors conclude that with all of this data, of course, there's relatively low certainty because of the quality of evidence, but all of this data combined does not support the present contraindication published by the AHA or the ESC. And they conclude that statistically, there did not appear to be any st significant difference in outcomes or adverse events when patients with a RVMI receive nitrates as compared to other lesions. Um, and additionally, those uh, c comparing patients with RVMIs who did not receive nitrates.